I thought I knew why I came here. I saw it. The end. It was so vivid. But now the truth feels further away than ever. I still have so many questions. You said you... Trinity, get hold of this. Let's think this through. Do you realize the tragedy you have unleashed? The cleansing has begun. It falls to me now to stop it before it consumes us all. What have I done? to believe. to the course of humanity. If you had that power, what would you do? Ever. Uh, and she's used to see dead people, you know, she's used to see that it's a tomb, it's called a tomb for a reason. What if she goes there and she finds that this place, people are still alive and they, are not they were never touched by modern civilization? What would she do and what would she say? And that's where people will say, wow, that could be very unique. The thing I really like about having Pi TT, and number one, as you mentioned, it's, it's the largest hub that we've ever built in a Tomb Raider game. So for anyone who is looking to 100% the game, this is where you're going to have your work cut out for you because it is filled with side quests, collectibles, narrative, and of course challenge tombs. So this, this is just dozens of hours of play here. But the thing that I really love about this is it, it, it sort of is a, is a perfect encapsulation of what the world in Tomb Raider is meant to be. The world is always meant to be a character. In some ways, it's an enemy because the world has secrets and it is protecting them. And Lara is able to go into the hidden pockets of the world where these secrets are held and survive in them and overcome the natural predators and environmental hazards. And she's able to find those secrets. That's what makes her special or part of what makes her so special. And, and the jungle, you know, as Dan was talking about, is, is one of the deadliest places in the world. And it is the protection for the hidden city of Paititi. So this is the big tomb, this is the big reward for being able to make it through the jungle. You then find the lost city of Paititi. Later on you'll see, uh, later on you'll see what the protector is, what's the guardian of Paititi. One an interesting part also for Paititi is that in the previous games, Lara you know, didn't get to talk to a lot of people. It was always very it was, she, uh, isolated. She was doing all these things by herself. She had some couple interaction 
with uh, some some characters like Jonah, for example. Uh, but it was really never that amount, you know, that that deep. We had the remnant on Rise, which you interact with. Uh, in this case here, um, we are touching a point where Lara she's not very comfortable. Normally, Lara she's very comfortable when you talk with her about archaeology. You know, she's geeking out, she's comfortable. But if you ask her, you know, what did you do last weekend, Lara? She will be like, uh, uh, she, you know, she doesn't have. She can't small talk. Exactly. <laughs> she and was probably raiding a tomb, in all honesty. Yeah. Exactly, <laughs> probably that. So it was very interesting from a team perspective where, you know, we were saying that what if Lara would talk with people around a table? She'd go to a cafe and sit down and chill. What would, you, what would she say? And then we didn't know. You know, we really, we, we, we were th thinking about that. And that's where we said probably she doesn't even know herself. So her relationship, even during side mission, things like that, she's very awkward. She's not, you know, she's not super like comfortable because she spends all the time with dead people. <laughs> dead people are not very hey, social. You know? not dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I know because I'm spending a lot of peop yeah. uh, dead people too because I, s I spent eight years with Lara, so I've seen oh. a lot of dead people. Well, and, <laughs> and, and Dan, I know that we also have the immersion mode. Mario, you know, this is one of the things I think actually speaking to Dan's point about it being somewhat awkward for Lara, that could actually make it awkward for the player, but on purpose, right? Yeah, when we say big, we, we even have around 19,000 facial animation for conversation. Everything you see in, the, in a Pike T right now, all the, the possibilities of conversation with people around the town, it goes up to 19,000, so it's very, very big. And for the immersion modes, like if you want to play, uh, because that's adding to the numbers, yeah. you know, the, the way they move, the facial and things. But if you really want to go with the initial vision, because the initial vision was bringing you to a place we've never seen before, a what if place, what if the Maya and the Aztec Inca were all merging together at a certain point, even though they never did. But it's a what if place. We need to create something very unique and very, you know, how this. These culture will coexist for 400 years without, you know, without con connecting with the exterior world. And we add an immersion mode in the menu where if you don't want to hear them speaking English, you know, with the, the chatter around, you want to hear them in the native language, you can do it. You can put the immersion mode and you can immerse yourself in that world completely. Right. And so right now, one of the things I did want to call out, because this is uh, one of the best parts, in my opinion, uh, the challenge tombs that are off. The, the main PyTT hub. So you can see here just a couple of the different spaces that you're going to be exploring. Um, and you know this is where when we talk about terrifying tombs, this is what we mean. The idea that this was a place that and a culture that celebrated death and worshiped fear. And you know there are those three main components to the tomb and the challenge tomb included. The first was that it was just difficult to get to. So you see that Lara right now has to do a significant amount of traversal just to find the entrance to the challenge tomb. The second was once you actually found it, it looked like it was a foreboding place. It was warning you to not come in here. But then of course Lara being Lara is going to push forward. And then the third thing was that it's deadly inside. Everything is trying to kill you. And we'll show you that a little bit more when we get to, to the warrior's trial later in the panel. One thing that was important in PyTT for the biggest sub we ever created, it was on the tech side to be able to have at all, at all time at least 50% on time uh, on screen. So um, this is uh, one thing that we did to make sure that we can bring life uh, as PyTT is kind of a celebration of life. Mm -hmm. When you add PyTT and all the side missions and show social and crypts and challenge doom, people were saying it's impossible. We cannot do that. You know, it's impossible. And one of the things we worked a lot on, and maybe Mario can expand on it, but we worked hard to try to make the, the, you know, the impossible possible. Yeah. And there's a lot of challenge doom and crypts and side mission communicating with you know, the, the, the people there. And, and it's massive, it's the biggest, like we were saying, it's about three times the size of, of the biggest hub we had on Rise. And we, go, we, we can go underwater, we can go up by using some of the, what we call the overhang, like it's more a vertical way to climb. And you know, all that is it, just there for you to explore and discover. Yeah, and you mentioned the crypts. So in Rise of the Tomb Raider, if you remember, the crypts were just relatively small areas. They had a sort of like a maze-like 
path that you had to solve, and then you'd have a reward on the inside. Well, now in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the crypts are as large as the challenge tombs were in Rise of the Tomb Raider, and many of the challenge tombs in Shadow of the Tomb Raider are as big as the main tombs were in Rise of the Tomb Raider. So they're not just terrifying, they're larger, there's more of them. So this really is, you know, Lara coming to the height of her skills, not just in the combat, not just in the narrative, but in her tomb raiding skills. And then you can see there the, the, the new tactics that we were talking about, like the rappelling, the swing, the wall run, all these things are necessary in order to move about the environment. Yeah, and the rappel down, as you saw just before, is a new mechanic that allows us to expand on the exploration of the world. So now you have new uh, way or a new way to, to get down, to get in, into some places, uh, to get rewards. And this is the entrance to the Warrior's Trial. Uh, you can see these spinning obelisk blades that Lara has to make her way through. Again, a lot of traversal challenges. The idea that once you get inside the tomb, not just the traps, but even just its inner workings, the puzzle elements, those are all trying to kill you. Yeah, I died a lot. When I play, like a, like a lot. You know we have these difficulty sliders, actually. Oh, that, you know, I did hear about those. <laughs> yeah, but she was playing easy and she died a lot, so... No, it's true, I was! Um, I think I just got to a point where maybe I was, I was like Laura, I was maybe a little too cocky, and I was like, I can do this, just run through, and I just always fell off the ledges. That was like the, the cause of most of my deaths, so be careful, those ledges will sneak up on you. The thing about using the rappel and things like that, it, it makes the traversal more challenging than before. Before that, you were actually, you know, following some so, some uh, things you were seeing that you could actually, uh, we, we call them the grappling axe, you know, visual language. Uh, you could actually follow that. Uh, in this case now, because there's a rappel, because you can wall run, because you can balance, it add a lot more challenge to uh, to all the traversal. One thing. It uh, does look yeah. dangerous. You are right. <laughs> <laughs> the deeper playthrough that, that Dan was talking about, but one of the things I love about this is the fact that it's located underwater. So Shadow of the Tomb Raider has full 360 degree movement. In Rise of the Tomb Raider, you, you kind of paddled around the surface, and fans said, bring back swimming. We want to go underwater. That's a hallmark of the franchise. And we said, all right, be careful what you wish for, because we're going to give you <laughs> underwater survival. You've got moray eels, you've got piranhas, you have to manage your oxygen. It's all very fast paced. It's not meant to be a clunky, you know, slow exploration. But the idea is that Lara is going into these unfamiliar territories. You have to make your way through very, very narrow crevasses, like down dark tunnels. You don't know what's waiting for you. You don't know if there's a, a treasure there, a challenge tomb, or you're just going to run out of oxygen. So we add that element of exploration. And in this case, if you have upgraded Lara's breath enough, she can make it all the way to this challenge tomb. Without that skill upgrade, you'd never be able to hold your breath long enough to that's find this challenge tomb. And she's that's got a fun sweet outfit too. That's <laughs> funny enough because <laughs> for the underwater thing is that because people were not used to do that when they start playing Shadow of Tomb so they went underwater and there were signs of challenge tomb, but they were all turning back because <laughs> they were afraid of missing, you know, some oxygen. So it was a very interesting uh, dynamic, uh, and seeing that was for us was like, yes, we got it. People are afraid. <laughs> 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 Also, yeah. we, we can't talk about a shadow without the lighting aspect. And for us, building Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we said, okay, we need to invest in our lighting technology. So we pushed a lot to make sure that we can bring the most immersive um, environment as possible. So you can see how lighting is something that talks that through the screen and also underwater there's like everything is handcrafted to make sure that we have a very very immersive uh, environment yeah and andrew you mentioned the outfit uh, yeah, you like that it one of the things that is really actually quite important about this is that it is showing the culture of pi tt accepting lara because at first much like the jungle pi tt is pushing back against lara they don't recognize her as someone coming to try and help. They, they recognize her as a threat from the outside world. And eventually, through her actions and through her friendships with people and interacting with them in a meaningful, positive way, they begin to trust her and welcome her into the culture and give her you know, the garb that sort of allows her to move freely throughout there. And, and I think that that's, that's sort of like a, uh, an example of how we treat the world in general. 
you know, PyTT eventually will accept you if, if you're doing the right things and, and it recognizes you're trying to help. Uh, the jungle, when you first start, is a very dark and foreboding place. And then as you progress and as Lara becomes one with the jungle, as we say, it actually opens up. It becomes lighter because it is a, it is a symbol of the world saying, all right, Lara is fitting into it. It is becoming one with the jungle. Of course, that gives you a lot of great combat advantages, but it's also a measure of that respect that the world is, is kind of giving Lara. And from a narrative standpoint also, uh, what's important about PyTT is that it's also a, it's also a pivotal point for her as, a, as, a, as, as she's growing into her role. And this is a pivotal point. The, her relationship with that city will actually change her. And you'll feel that as you're going to play the game, that there's emotional evolution for her when she goes there because she's seeing how these people are living. They see how they're accepting her. Because the, the dress that she wears right now, it's an Incan dress. Uh, it's part of the rebel group. She's a uh, part of the rebel group helping uh, against uh, the cult of Cuckoo Ken, of course. We like to do a joke about that because there's a, one of the video, the merchant is, is saying that it's, it, it's funny for us because we've been hearing it 10,000 times. But that's what it is exactly. So she's going against uh, this cult. This tyrannical cult, and they they helping each other, and that's what the thing about that is that the, her relationship with that with, with with this rebel with these people actually is transforming her. It is the gate to get to Paititi. This is uh, one of the ideas that people uh, from the community had say, hey. A lot of these cool tombs actually are challenge tombs, and we would like to have you know tombs that are much more complex on the main path. And because we had the difficulty, adaptive difficulty in mind, we knew that we could do that. So actually, this tomb is on the main path, and it's protecting Paititi. It is hard, but it is cool, and it's epic because it's one of the few. You know, when you look at it, it's one of the few uh, tombs that we have that are open air. The open air. Uh, and it's the trial of the eagle. So there's multiple trial that Lara had to go through reach by TT. That's why it's not touched by modernity. It's protecting it. There's a trial of the jaguar, trial of the spider, and this is the trial of the eagle. Oh, and you guys put spiders in the game? Why? Well, and the, you know what? I think that one of the things that is, that is most special about this, this is one of my favorite spots because it, it combines several pillars that are so important to the franchise. So if you look at what we're showing here, it's yes, a tomb, but it also heavily focuses on traversal, heavily focuses on puzzle solving, interacting with the environment, as well as there are some traps in here. If you're not careful, some of the elements that you turn on can actually kill you. And I will say, uh, if you don't want a spoiler, anytime you see Lara take out her bow, close your eyes, and then just keep it closed for about a 10 count, and then you can open it back up. We won't think you're scared, because there's nothing scary in this tomb, but if you want to solve it by yourself, the bow is, is going to give you some spoilers if you watch. Yeah, one thing about the failing in trial, this is a good example, because in the first place, um, that uh, map was built by a team we're working with, a great team we're working with, and uh, at some point, we were trying to get a, uh, a very good puzzle. We couldn't do it. So how many times we throw that in the garbage, redo it? And at one point, we said, OK, let's bring one of the, the challenge to put it on uh, one of the puzzle and put it right on the, the path. And it became uh, one benchmark for all of the other uh, puzzle we made for the game. So I can say the first version of the puzzle was pretty lame. Uh, to just to be honest, uh, it was pretty lame. It always, it, you know, video games are very hard, you know, and you, you, you test a lot of things. And, and uh, like Mario was saying, it was a team that was building one of the benchmark, what would be like a challenge to things. And we were like, wow, man, let's get that and put it there. And, and it felt right at home with the wind and e eagle. So it actually felt right at home. And, and now people actually love that because it's a great gate. I love that you like indirectly insulted the first guy that worked on this. You're like, it's pretty lame. Some, there's one person right now crying watching this stream. So good, good job, Dan. I think, I think no, that this I, is also I, a great, a I great do lame example. stuff all the time. Yeah. yeah, I think this is also a great example of if you turned off the white markings, just imagine trying to navigate this space without knowing what you could interact with. That to me is where all you, all you guys who said, you know, what is, I think it's like turn off white paint is the, uh, the group that Dan was talking about earlier. 
everyone in that group, this is where you're going to say, mm, maybe just here, we, we turn it on. Just for this one tomb, and then I'll, and then I'll turn it back off, I promise. Exactly. No, always leave it on. Just leave it on. Yes. But I, I, this, again, this is one of my favorite spaces just because it, it shows Lara doing what Lara does best, being a brilliant archaeologist. And it's, you know, there's, there's no combat in here, so you can just take your time. You can figure out how does the world work. You know, we always try and make sure that we have very physics-based puzzles, making the world interact and react in a very believable manner. To Dan's earlier point, making it feel like, you know, the, the civilization could actually build this using the technology and the means that they had at their disposal. So this for me is just it's just such a great example of, of what makes Shadow of the Tomb Raider special because you've got you've got an open air tomb, you've got all this puzzle solving, you've got the culture clearly, you know, shining through here. So I, I just love this. Whoever did this demo makes it look so easy. It was not this easy when I tried it. <laughs> Do you know, believe it or not, when we are making these captures, so I will say a uh, little, little insider info for you guys because you were kind enough to join the panel, we probably go through about 20 to 25 captures before we will actually put it up on screen because we will sit there and to do a run through like this where you don't mess up like oh that was so perfect except Lara's leg just clipped through that rock right there sorry <laughs> <laughs> go back and re-record this 20 minute segment and then, oh, no. and then we make somebody else cry that's that's how I make people cry Dan <laughs> Dan makes them cry by saying your work was crap <laughs> But most of the thing I say is crap, it's because me, I directed it too. Eh? You know, it's like the tomb before this one, I directed it, and it was crap. But <laughs> that was you in the mirror talking to yourself. Your work is crap. You Make that puzzle not lame. 